Hi, welcome to Minimal Casts. This is the second installment of the increased developer productivity with Tmux screencast. And I'm going to get more into the details of Tmux with this episode. I'm going to focus on the configuring Tmux. Now, let's open up a window and I'm going to open up pane here, a split vertical pane, and now you're, as far as I know, I installed Tmux on OS X here with Brew. I don't think there's a global configuration file. What you do is you, if for my personal login here, under my home directory, you put a .tmux.config uh, .com file and that's how you do your customizations in Tmux. Now, if you're going to be using Tmux to increase your productivity, you're going to want to use Tmux a lot. And one of the first things I'll recommend to do is to use a single key for the Tmux prefix. So before you do a Tmux command, it's the prefix before that command. Now, by default, it's Control B. So you hit Control B, percentage sign, that splits the window vertically. Instead, you want to set the pre prefix to one character because you're going to be using it all the time. It's pretty common practice. I think I got it from online to maybe even when, when I was using screen, but to use the backtick operator instead of Control B. And these three commands are important important to do too and I have these in my dot files on my github command um, my github account because they enable you to also type the back tick operator and I actually just clicked on the back tip back tick character twice there so needs to be used just like this so if you do that copy these three commands in exactly in order all right moving on here this is a simple binding of the last window command to l uh, capital l so i'm going to open up another tmux window here i'm going to hit the prefix key command l that gets me to the last window i use that absolutely all the time definitely put it in your uh, your comp file let's keep moving here there is this is standard stuff too I believe I don't know all of these things that are in my comp file but uh, setting the default terminal to that screen to 56 color is, is is one of them now this next command has to do with it says uh, reattach to user namespace this has to do with with copying and pasting in Tmux and I'm gonna to get to that in another episode. Let's move down here. This enables the windows to start at 1 so um, you see down in my lower left hand corner we're at 1, 2, that's just that. The mouse command is getting your mouse to work and be able to copy and paste also using your mouse. I don't do too much of that but I do do it from time to time uh, there's another friendly mouse command here. And I'm going to continue to move on. The scroll history. Uh, set it really high. You get a, you if you're doing any kind of development, you just get a lot of output in a window, um, whether it's debug or backtracing. You want to set it high so you can capture all of that history in your in in the scroll history. All right, I'm going to continue to go down here. All right, I'm not sure what this one does exactly, the alternate screen. Um, here the escape time allows you faster key repetition, so I set this at zero. That's also pretty orthodox practice. Now, here's the status bar. You may have noticed this. This is on the bottom part of my screen. This is, has the 
uh, the numbering on the left side, the numbering of the windows, but also has the time and has a Christian at minimal.com. That's all done right through these commands. It'd be good to look at those and see how you want to do things. I don't even know why I have my email address on there, but uh, I added some spacing here too. I added some notes about being able to see growl notifications better. So let's keep going. Uh, there's this aggressive resize on command. I'm not totally sure what it does, but I do use full screen mode in OS X when I'm doing work in the console. So maybe that is why I have that there. Uh, the next command here is um, this. If you have a Tmux window inside of a window, this enables you to send the prefix there correctly. I don't even, I haven't even used this because I always almost use screen when I'm going to do this thing, like if I go to one of my servers, I use screen and uh, I just use control A with with screen. And the reason I use screen on servers is because it's just installed by default usually. And I only need like two or three windows from doing something and I don't need the um, pretty much the superiority that Tmux brings. Um, I don't need that when I'm just doing the server work. Okay. This is this colors the active window to red. You can see on the left-hand corner we got the red for number one window. Um, I use VI uh, Vim rather, so you are definitely going to want these. You know, right now I'm moving around using the VI keys. Um, oh, that's because I'm in Vim. That's why the VI keys are working. But if I went into copy mode here which I just went into copy mode in Tmux. I'm still using my up and down keys here, my J and K. Um, I can go to the beginning of a line, to the end of the line, all using uh, the same keys in Vim. And I'm in, I'm not in Vim right now, I'm in the Tmux copy mode. I'm gonna get out of Tmux copy mode by hitting Control C. And I'm gonna go into the Vmux uh, excuse me, Tmux copy mode in another episode because it's such a it's such a big topic. All right, let's move to the next section here. Now, here this has more. This next section has more to do with copying and pasting in Tmux. Now, the there's a very good article to because there's some things you have to set up to this reattach to the user namespace in OS X. You have to set up. I believe you can do that through. But anyway, ThoughtBot has a very good article. That's where I got this from anyway. So that that will explain more of the copy and pasting in, in OS X, I should say. And um, here it's also mapping it to V. So when I, I'm going to go back into copy mode. And then when I hit V, then it goes into that block copy and I hit Y, that'll go into my clipboard. And that uses PB Copy to do that. Okay, let's keep moving. Now, here is some more uh, with those Vim bindings. Uh, rather, those Vim bindings were for copy mode. Now, for moving around panes, I'm using uh, VI keys to uh, similar VI keys to do that. So if I do prefix H, I go to the left window pane. If I do prefix um, L, I go to the right pane. Let me make a, a down pane here. If I do prefix K, I go up a pane. I do prefix J, I go down um, a window pane. And let me do prefix X to kill this window. And let's move down to the next section here. Now this next section has to do with resizing vertical panes. I almost always use vertical panes and not horizontal horizontal panes, but I do do horizontal panes. Like I, I had just shown, I had made a, a horizontal pane there to split the screen, but I will use horizontal panes when I want a wide viewport too, when um, I need to be read a log file or something like that. But anyway, I made some bind keys here that have to do with resizing 
uh, vertical panes. Now let me let me demonstrate here. I'm gonna hit prefix key, the meta key seven. Okay, I'm gonna hit prefix key, meta key eight. That's sizing this window here, this T1 window, because I usually have two window panes. So T1 means the, this window I'm in now. T0 is over here, the one I just went to. Let me hit meta key nine. You can see that I'm able to quickly adjust the windows. It's usually, I'm gonna hit meta key one here. Meta key one, I don't have here. This is a, a built-in default if with Tmux. That'll, that'll realign window, uh, ver two vertical windows evenly. And then lastly, prefix key zero, that moves the window more over here to the left. And that, again, as I was gonna say before, this has to do with reading output on this right pane. Usually if you have a, a stack trace file, I wanna uh, quickly move over the pane so I can read it. And then I, sometimes I wanna read the code better. It's, there's too much word wrapping going on. In, in that case, I would do something like meta key nine so I could read more of the code, which is in, on my left side here. So let's go back to an even window. Let me go back to this window and come to the last command here, which really is kind of goes up with that copying paste code I just showed. Here when uh, you do hit the Y, it runs a shell command. This is again in that ThoughtBot article and the ThoughtBot article explains it well. This has to do with saving your information that you're trying to save it in that copy mode uh, to your clipboard. So that is a overview of my com file and gives you a good understanding of some of the things you may or may not want to do or if you're just getting started it's a pretty good way to start. So let's stop here. Um, part three is coming. There's many parts uh, coming and following so stay tuned and thanks for watching.